There is a powerhouse team in the NFC that no one sees coming, that everyone is sleeping on, and that team is none other than the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, the Seahawks. Nine and eight. They made the playoffs. Nobody expected that. Nobody saw that coming. The Seattle Seahawks are a powerhouse waiting to happen. The Seattle Seahawks are ready to soar in 2023. And it's going to be because of this offseason. The 2023 offseason is the breakout offseason for the Seattle Seahawks. And the 2023 season is the breakthrough year for the Seattle Seahawks. The Russell Wilson trade was a franchise-changing trade for the Seattle Seahawks. That trade alone catapulted Seattle into a future that is extremely promising. They had an incredible draft last year, and a bunch of key pieces from that draft allowed them to make the playoffs, allowed them to have a season that nobody saw coming. Now they have 2023, an offseason where they have a ton of ammunition to capitalize off of. They have a ton of salary cap. And better than that, they are in a unique situation that not many teams have ever found themselves in. They are picking in the top five of this NFL draft. There have only been 10 teams in NFL history who have made the playoffs and then had a top five pick. Not only do they have a top five pick after making the playoffs, They also have two first round picks. They have the 20th overall pick in this year's draft. And they have four picks in the top 55 picks overall of this 2023 NFL draft. Seattle is set up already with a foundation of young ballers. And now they can build on top of those key pieces and build the rest of the foundation for the future of Seattle football. But first, they must answer their biggest question. And that question is, of course, the Geno Smith question. What are we going to do with Geno Smith? Is he going to be our future? Is he going to be our quarterback? Is he going to be our leader? It sounds like Geno Smith wants to be back. It sounds like Pete Carroll wants him back. And I don't blame him because he set every record known to Seahawk man. He set the completions record. He set the completion percentage record. He set the yards record. He did it all for Seattle last year. And Pete Carroll knows that. He said it himself. He wants him here. He knows he's a key piece to their future. And he's been an incredible leader for this young football team. He's exactly what you want at the quarterback position. But Geno Smith is not a special quarterback. He's not a Patrick Mahomes-esque type of talent. He's a good player. He performed very, very well last year and had a career year. But you want to help prop up Geno Smith. You want to make sure that he continues to play at that level. And that's where I really start to fall in love with the Seattle Seahawks. Because of what's around Geno Smith. Bookending the offensive line, you have two really promising Rookie turned sophomore tackles, Cross and Lucas. Both, I feel, can be starters in this league and maybe high-end starters for a long time. It's very impressive to play tackle at that level in year one in the NFL. You also have a elite guard in Damian Lewis as well. That's three foundational pieces of your offensive line. We'll see what happens with Austin Blythe at center. They could use an upgrade there. Gabe Jackson at guard, they may let him go as a cap casualty, and they may move to a younger, more promising player at the other guard position. But that's just the beginning, because you have the beast, DK Metcalf. You have the burner, Tyler Lockett. You have the bully, Kenneth Walker. And you have the beauty, Noah Fant. I'm just looking for a B adjective. I don't know. You tell me. Those weapons are really, really nice. Really nice. DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett on the outside. Kenneth Walker, a dynamic back in the backfield. Noah Fant. Maybe you can use a number three receiver. But Geno already has chemistry with all those guys. They're explosive athletes. They're big play players. 
And then you add what Shane Waldron has done with this offense on top of it, adding some creativity, getting that run game going, tying it into the pass game through the play action, which was real strong last year. Geno benefited greatly from that. And I believe in year two with Waldron and Geno Smith and this entire offense as a collective, maybe an improved offensive line, this offense could be even better, even more explosive, even more consistent. And I already love how balanced this offense can be. They can rush for 100 yards, they can throw for 300, and they prove that in 2022. Talking about Shane Waldron, I really feel like this is the first time in a long time that Seattle has two really good coordinators. It's been a while since I really fell in love with an offensive coordinator in Seattle, and I do believe that Shane Waldron is one of the more underrated offensive minds, offensive coordinators, offensive play callers in the NFL, and he deserves a ton of love, and I'm surprised he hasn't really gotten more from the general public or the general NFL media. Defensively, Clint Hurt really had a tough task because he had to convert a defense that's been playing a certain way, a certain style for so many years. The Seattle scheme, the cover three, everybody knows it, right? And he converted it into more of a 3-4 style defense. More blitzing, more aggression, different coverages, a plethora of coverages that the Seattle Seahawks have never really ran under Pete Carroll. And on top of that, different fronts. So this was the first year, 2022, a year of transition, a year of transformation, offensively, defensively, which provides a lot of promise moving into 2023 because you've already built that foundation, those fundamentals of the systems you want to run on offense and defense. And you now know what type of players that you already have fit those systems and which ones you need to upgrade from and which ones you need to move off of. The defensive side of the football is definitely the area, the side of the football, where Seattle wants to get better. And their biggest priority, according to Pete Carroll, is to get better up front. They want to become more dynamic in their front seven, and specifically with their pass rush. Remember when Seattle was at its best defensively? Michael Bennett, Cliff Averill. Yeah, that's what they want to be once again. They look at San Francisco with Nick Boza and Eric Armstead, two guys you got a game plan for. And they're envious of that. They're jealous of that. So I believe Seattle wants to get more dynamic. And the way they could do that is by targeting the draft. That is probably the place they're going to go with that fifth overall pick. And maybe even the 20th overall pick as well. It's been a while since Seattle has had a truly dynamic pass rusher. Nwosu was awesome for them last year, but I think he's an ideal number two pass rusher. You're still looking for that guy that can put you over the top defensively, that Nick Boza player that San Francisco selected with the second overall pick. That is the type of game changer, the Aiden Hutchinson type player for the Lions that they got this year. That is the guy you need. And that is one of the premier positions in all of football. Once you find one of those guys, you sign him, you keep him, and you make sure that he is there for a very long time. You just got to find that guy. When you look at Seattle, they were pretty good at sacking quarterbacks last year. They were seventh. But a lot of that came because of the switch in scheme. Because they were blitzing more, it led to more sacks. And that's great. But what great defenses can actually do is not always have to rely on blitzing. You can rely on the situational blitz to take a quarterback and an offensive line and an offensive schemer off guard. But what you really want to be able to do is rush four, rush four, rush four, be a four-man rush predominant team, and then mix in the blitz. That's what you want to be able to do. And Seattle was not very good simply rushing three, four, maybe even five. They're only 21st in pressure rate. They were 28th in pass rush win rate last year. They were not a very good team when it came to just simply winning up front. And that speaks to the talent. The scheme brought sacks. But what you want to have is talent mixed with scheme, which equals great defense. And that's what the Seahawks are searching for. More dynamic front seven playmakers that can get to the quarterback. But pass rush wasn't the only problem. 
was Seattle's defense. And I believe a big reason run defense was also a huge issue, if not the biggest issue for Seattle's defense last year, was because they switched schemes. When you switch schemes, you lose fundamentals, and you have players playing in wrong roles and incorrect situations. And it takes a while to figure that out. They rank 30th versus the run last year. They allowed nine games last season alone of over 150 rushing yards. That is ugly. That is putrid. And three games over 200 against teams that weren't even that good. The Raiders, the Saints, the Panthers. Teams that sure could run the ball, but they weren't a very good team. If Seattle wants to be a much better defense next year, it all starts with the run defense. When you can make an offense one-dimensional, you're a good defense in today's day and age because it's tough to play defense. And it's that much tougher when you can't stop the run because the passing game is OP. So Seattle needs to find those players that are not only good at rushing the quarterback, but also can help them be steady versus the run. And that was shocking to see last year because Seattle under Pete Carroll has always been very good versus the run. In free agency, if they are going to target any of the positions through free agency defensively, the two positions I would suggest would be defensive line. There's Deron Payne out there. There's a Javon Hargrave out there. There's some really good players in the interior defensive line that could really help Seattle pass rushing and run defending. And there's also the cornerback position. Somebody like Jamel Dean, who's still young, really sticks out in my mind to fit the scheme of the Seattle Seahawks really, really well. But cornerback and the secondary is an area that Seattle was really good last year. They were very good versus the pass, despite not having a very good pass rush, which speaks a lot to the talent in the back end and how coordinated they were and how schematically sound they were in the back end. Obviously, it helps to hit a home run with Tariq Woolen, but guys like Kobe Bryant, Michael Jackson, I know, the name team, they came through with their performance last year, admirably. I will say they could use a little bit of an upgrade there and perhaps put those guys into more depth roles, but they played really well for you, at least above expectation. Maybe a more veteran name that is in the market could be utilized, like a Patrick Peterson, for example. The Seattle Seahawks could use one or two more corners to the mix, but I also really like their safety position. I think it might be the strongest on this defense. Jamal Adams is coming back. He'll help with the run D for sure, and definitely the blitzing as well. He fits this scheme perfectly well, which is, I think, part of the reason they made that switch. Quandre Diggs is still a very good ball hawk and free safety, and Ryan Neal played very, very well. He's an RFA, but I expect him to be back. That's three safeties. That's what you need in this NFL. You need three safeties that can play and play a lot of snaps in different roles and different niches. Adams is that hybrid player. Neal is that box player. And then you also have Diggs, who's that deep kind of center field Earl Thomas type of player for this defense. So Seattle has some pieces all over their defense from Nwosu to Woolen, to Diggs and Adams, to Jordan Brooks, who's a very good linebacker coming back from injury. This defense has pieces, but it's building around those pieces and fixing and tweaking the flaws to make this team a much more well-rounded roster entering 2023. And honestly, I don't think it's going to take a lot because this is a very well-coached defense. If they get a pass rusher and just fix that run defense a little bit, I think they're going to be a much better Defense, and therefore, a much better team, because we know the offense can score points. With tons of draft ammunition and plenty of cap space, the Seattle Seahawks have the ability this offseason to reinforce their already strong foundation of young football players. 2023 could be the season the Seattle Seahawks break through and break out. If they play their cards right and they nail another draft and they pick up just a couple key free agents, the Seattle Seahawks will soar as the new powerhouse in the NFC. Thanks guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to grok, spike the like button and subscribe for more NFL 
just like this. It's Mitch. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.